So, so many questions right now loom over this one incident that's been reported in Delhi. And we're going to address some of your questions, queries about the earthquake that struck the national capital region. Joining us here on this broadcast is Mr. A.K. Shukla, former head of the National Center for Seismology. So there's no better name to really answer all of your queries. Thank you, Mr. Shukla, for your time. Uh, a couple of questions, really, that have been asked, particularly about the incident that happened this morning. First is how was the epicenter actually in Delhi? Is that unprecedented? Has that happened before, sir? Yeah, Delhi, because the, the, as you know, Delhi is in seismic zone. Seismic zone four. We are the country, we have divided the country in four zones. Zone two, three, four, four, and five. Five is the highest zone, high intensity zone, and uh, then the four. So the geological uh, structure of Delhi is such that the such type of uh, earthquake, even up to magnitude, you can say up to six magnitude can produce these, uh, these uh, uh, fault systems. These are the uh, fault systems. And uh, this, these, are the, uh, these are created because of the movement of our Indian plate to the uh, colliding, colliding with the uh, uh, Eurasian plate. So this is the basic reason. So we cannot say that it is a unusual phenomena has happened in this uh, Delhi. Okay. There were centers in this uh, this area earlier also, and about as Dr. Mishra has told, it was uh, recorded at more than 4.5 magnitude earthquake in this area. So it's oh, not too think... very. Okay, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Shukla, yeah. you know, one of the questions that everyone's talking about who, lived in, who lives in Delhi and in the national capital region is that this quake felt more powerful than usual. Is that really the case? Why so, if yes? Why did this feel more powerful? Yeah, yeah. It's looked like powerful because as uh, the energy when generated uh, on the basis of earthquake, the energy generated travel in the form of waves. So these are the two types of wave. One is the primary wave where the earthquake travel, just giving the jerk. And the second wave, this is not very dangerous. This type of wave is not dangerous. Uh, uh, and then comes the secondary wave. This is mm -hmm. sinusoidal wave. So uh, the earth uh, uh, shows so in this, uh, this uh, wave. So this wave is analogous to the sound wave. So when this first primary wave has come, so this create the sound. And uh, of course, because the depth is very shallow, about five kilometers, so a lot of noise has taken place, uh, and uh, really it, uh, it was a uh, little surprising. Sur not surprising, but yes, it mm -hmm. was uh, uh, felt by the people, heard by the people, and it's created panic. But that need not to, uh, this is not a matter of panic. We should not uh, worry about this. Okay, this so is nothing the unusual, but understandable, of course, that there was a certain sense of fear with the sound that came along with these tremors. Uh, the other question that constantly comes up, Mr. Shukla, about this incident and overall, really, the fact that Delhi is uh, in Zone 4, which means that there is a possibility and a risk of quakes, as you told us, is whether Delhi is actually prepared if an earthquake strikes. How prepared are we, you know, urban infrastructure-wise? Do you think that every step of planning has been done, keeping in mind that Delhi, the national capital, is in fact in risk of a quake? Yeah, it's a million dollar question. To prepare, when we are asking, we are uh, saying that it's a, whether we are prepared, means there are two ways, post-earthquake and after the earthquake. After earthquake, yes, we are fully prepared. We have NDM, NDMRS, SDMRF, means this type, uh, two types of these uh, force are uh, there. And really, they are very much equipped and they are reaching very, very time. We have seen in Sikkim earthquake within two, uh, one and a half days they have reached. So this is yeah. the post earthquake scenario. We are very well able to manage. But the pre earthquake, the pre earthquake means we have to create our houses, we have to construct our houses as per the building code. Building code, when we are saying, means whether these are, uh, these buildings will be able to uh, uh, tolerate the force generated by the earthquake. So it is uh, for this, we have the code. We have BIS has prepared the code for different zones, different type of uh, buildings are to be constructed depending upon the force of the seismicity experience, uh, force of the earthquake experience in these zones. So okay. if you talk about Delhi, we always uh, we uh, I mean, always uh, listen that most of the building are uh, not as per this one even uh, not per as per the building code uh, mm -hmm. even in the code uh, the matter is matter went to the court in uh, uh, supreme court and 
official statement that 90% buildings are not not sure yeah. that they are the earthquake, uh, earthquake resistant. So it's very yeah. difficult to say, ah, oh, yes, the new construction, we should yeah. assume because 10, 15 years, uh, from uh, 10, 15 years, we are we are really able to understand the earthquake. People have I also think what understand that, that essentially means, Mr. Shukla, from what you're telling us, I could be wrong, which is that actually the high rises seem to be complying more because they've come up off late, which means that they've also kept it in mind and ensured that certain precautions are taken. It's the older buildings that are very concerning because not just are they old infrastructure, but also not updated with the latest codes and perhaps not really uh, safe uh, in case an earthquake strikes. But Mr. Shukla, with this one incident that's been reported today with the epicenter in Delhi, do we anticipate more earthquakes in the capital? Not, not because of this particular earthquake. We cannot say that earthquake will not come in future. But because of generally what happens when big, large earthquake occurs, so aftershock follows. So for this earthquake, we, are, we, we can say that there will not be any earthquake because of this earthquake. Separate earthquake mm -hmm. at separate place at separate epicenter may be happen, but this earthquake is not uh, probably not able to generate the uh, aftershock. So we should not worry about what this incident. But okay. yes, we can come at any time, and we should be careful. We should take precaution. We should be ready for this one, as you have mm -hmm. told the about the building. We should be ready for this one, and uh, and other uh, things which are required for this uh, yeah. earthquake. Just My final management. question to you, Mr. Shukla, is, you know, you've been speaking about ensuring that we take preventive precautionary steps, rather. Uh, is there any way we can actually predict if an earthquake is about to strike? Are there any telltale signs? No, we cannot predict, not anywhere in, in a world. No, no country can predict the earthquake uh, uh, in a very advanced. Yes, China has tried and they predict the one earthquake, but fail to the other earthquake. Means every earthquake has their own structure, the way of formation of the energy, etc. But yes, there is alert system. Uh, our uh, Honorable Prime Minister has in some function told that we should do, we should, uh, uh, do something about the early warning system. So in case of earthquake, early warning when we are saying, so it's a very, as I have told that these are the primary wave and secondary wave. So they are the nature is different, the speed is different. So taking care of these is speed, we can give a warning of a few seconds. Suppose some earthquake okay. has occurred in the Himalaya, and so the energy, which is destructive energy, may take a few seconds, or 40, 50 seconds, to uh, Delhi. So in this mm -hmm. 50 seconds, and the first wave, P wave, as I have sent, uh, we have discussed already, so that P wave, if you can send through the V set immediately, so it will take about 40 seconds to the other wave, which can distract the house. So we can get the warning of 40 seconds. So this is That's hardly this any is, time. Only any time okay. to actually do anything no, or no, no, even no, react much, for that matter. No, 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 no. Forty second is quite enough. If you can get the warning of forty second, you can come out from the uh, from your uh, house. Because okay. only thing is that you come out from your structure. If it is not safe, you come out from the structure. So forty second at least in first or second third floor. You can come out from... Uh, no, but from how will you spread the word so fast, Mr. Shukla? How will everyone know that, you know, this is coming in a matter of 40 seconds? Yeah. How do you ensure that people know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the thing. That is early warning system. We have to generate the system. We have to communicate properly. The communication system has to develop. And probably uh, because of this uh, Prime Minister's uh, instruction, and mm -hmm. in a few years, in a few months or years, we will be able to get such type of structure. We certainly such hope so, Mr. We certainly hope so. Mr. Shukla, thank you very much for joining us, answering all of our queries. I'm sure you've put a lot of minds at ease right now with the details and expert opinion that you've given us on this broadcast about what to expect in the days, weeks and months to come in Delhi. Thank you very much.